Hello and welcome to another episode of Literary Gladiators, the show where we discuss and debate literature in all of its forms. If it's written work, it's game. Let's meet the panel. Hi, I'm Larry. Hi, I'm Jesse. I'm Tori. And I'm Josh. Uh, Larry, uh, welcome back. Thank you. Uh, you enjoy your week-long uh, siesta? Yeah, it's been a while. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, great to have you back on the panel. Uh, the four of us have had some really good discussions. Uh, and no, we're not going to make you drink any sugar water. <laughs> <laughs> but we are going to be talking about another. An, we're going to be talking about another potential beverage, and that is milk. And we are going to be going all the way back to Aesop, and we and we're going to be talking about the milkmaid and her pail, which is an Aesop fable, and it's probably known most for its moral, and that's uh, don't count your chickens before they hatch. And Jesse, you have a discussion starter. I for do. Uh, very simple one, but I think it's going to make everybody think. Um, so, as Josh just said, the moral of the story is to not count your chickens before they hatch, but is this the only moral the story has to offer? Hmm. No. Elaborate. <laughs> You're the first to answer. Yeah. <laughs> there, there, I think that there are two things that can come out of it. Uh, number one is. Uh, Keep an eye on what you're doing, which is the obvious one. But number two is, don't be so, uh, don't don't be so arrogant. And which it ties into don't count your chickens before they hatch. But it seemed like the milkmaid possessed a sense of vanity. So you take that as arrogance. There was a, the fact that she was looking. She had very high expectations for herself, and it turned into the sense of. Uh, when your expectations become too high, it begins to blow out of proportion, where it starts out, the milkmaid has milk. It's going to provide her with cream. Make the cream into butter to take the, take the butter to the market to sell. Use the money to buy eggs. The eggs become chickens. Create a poultry yard. Sell a fowl. Use the money on a gown. Go to the fair. Attract the fellows. Tease them. And then deny them. And then when she was when she was making that whip, she was doing it in real life. And she put her hair back there and the went the pail. Went, yep. so. <laughs> okay, yeah, I can see that. It, it, she kind of got a little too cocky. big for her own bridges. Yeah, Absolutely. a little cocky. Yeah. So yeah, I can definitely see that. Um, haven't we all just daydreamed though and kind of lost what we were doing? I think I can understand her daydreaming because um, I know that if I had to get up and go milk cows every day and balance a pail on my head, I would get really bored and not want to do the work. Um, so yeah, no, I would definitely daydream. It's and a time of no Netflix. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no in a way, Netflix, I know that so. feeling because I, when I don't have to work in the morning, I help my parents out fill the water for the geese, the ducks, and the deer. Yeah, so I, I, would, I would definitely imagine daydreaming probably makes it a little bit easier, especially if you think that, you know, it's like, oh, I'm going to buy this fabulous dress and I'm going to look the best. Because when you daydream, who actually daydreams about things going wrong, you know, or like, yeah, I don't think they do. <laughs> well, don't do that. Not very optimistic. <laughs> George Orwell, I guess. Yeah. yeah. That's called anxiety. Yeah. That's yeah. That, that, that turns into dystopian. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Then you go dystopian, it's just, mm -hmm. you end up the with... world ends. I don't know. 19. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I tend to agree with you, Josh, in, uh, in what you said first with, with about keeping your your eye on the task at hand, you know, and, and not, not not thinking about the future too much, keeping your head down. It's an obvious moral. Even if, even it's just paying attention to what you're doing. Yeah. That'd be, in today's society, it would be pale on your head. Ooh, I wonder what. Yeah. Um, I, wonder what I wonder what Jesse's talking Went about today to on phone. Facebook. <laughs> My cats, of course. Yeah. <laughs> you, you walk into a pond and the internet laughs. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, if anything, that would probably get you, you know, to go viral if you had a milk pail on your head. And you yeah, well, I mean, yeah, yeah. If you that look at conversely, if you filmed somebody doing that, that would be a better one. <laughs> oh my goodness! I'm a milkman. <laughs> 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 Great selfie. <laughs> and there goes. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag ASAP selfie. <laughs> Hashtag. 
it's stuff that's printed. There we go. We're going to start that. That's going to be the new Guile trend. Can we add the Instagram <laughs> video description? <laughs> Hashtag it. <laughs> well, we'll set up a Twitter account just so that way we can see your Aesop selfies. <laughs> back at it again with that milk pail. Sorry. Okay, we'll take care of it. Don't yeah, worry. Don't worry Righty back. <laughs> Does anybody have any contrasting thoughts? I think it's a very simply put story. It's what, three paragraphs long? In my <laughs> version, it was a paragraph in his. So. Yeah, exactly. So. Anybody have any final thoughts? Nothing to say on this one? No, not really. <laughs> How would you feel right. about a milk pail on your head? Could you do it? Could I do it? Do you think you'd look lovely in the dress? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh God, no, At the fair? Should he do, should it? Yeah. do it? Should he do it? I mean, <laughs> since you're not drinking the sugar water today. <laughs> Just hope there's nothing on to the sides of him. <laughs> He's that hair, Larry. Flip that hair. <laughs> Tease them, boys. <laughs> Alrighty, this is probably going to be, this is our shortest episode since To His Coy Mistress from season four. But Breaking if you're record. interested in checking out The Milkmaid and Her Pal, uh, here is my copy. Uh, I got this from Barnes & Noble uh, at the Mammoth Mall, to be specific, which it's a shame that there are so many malls that are doing away with bookstores. Aside from the Mammoth Mall, there's maybe only... About one or two other malls in the state. That's a soapbox for another time. Yeah. <laughs> but this book is, uh, this has everything when it comes to Aesop. Uh, this is my go-to, and I feel that since I own this, I really don't need another Aesop collection in my book collection. Fair enough. All right, yeah, that's it. I thought you were looking at me with shock. <laughs> you can never have enough Aesop collections. <laughs> <laughs> Be sure to join us next time for another episode of Literary Gladiators. For now, keep reading.